Make sure you get that on. What? What's that? I'll get all of it. I'll get all of it. Hello, welcome to Adventure Dad. Today, I need your help. Usually, I'm one of those people that can make decisions really quickly, and then I just roll with that decision. This one's been hurting. This is my 2006 Toyota Tundra. This is the last year of the first gens. My wife and I test drove one of these when it was new. We didn't buy it, and I kind of felt like it was the car that got away. It's the right size. It's got the right weight to power ratio for me. I love driving this truck. We're in a parking lot, so you can hear another car go by here. This truck right here, I purchased from my hunting partner a couple of years ago. So I know the original owner, I know the second owner. I waited like five years for him to finally be done with this truck. I bought it, when I got it, it had 195,000 miles and the factory suspension was worn out. I built this suspension just for me. So it's custom tuned for my family of five, a dog, all of our off-road gear. Like when I built this suspension, I had AccuTune, custom build the shocks and the coilovers for me. We weighed all the tires, I put all the weight in it, had plates and water bottles and big water tanks in here, kind of replicate the weight of my family and all of our stuff. And I went to a race car shop and I had every tire individually weighed. You know, this, when, when we're fully loaded, this truck rides awesome. Love this truck. However, two years ago, we decided to go on a trip around the country, 33 states, almost 12,000 miles if I remember right and we you know there's going to be a lot of things that go wrong we didn't want to have to worry about the car and so we went out and bought a brand new Tundra this is our first car ever our first new car ever my wife and I have never had a new car never really seen the value in it however prices went crazy used prices were off the chart and I found this Tundra so this is a 2021 this is the last year of the second generation Tundra and this Tundra we've built for towing so I have airbags, rear sway bar, these awesome, awesome, awesome tow mirrors. These are boost tow mirrors, allow you to see back, like almost around the back of the trailer. And I need to decide which one to keep. It's now been over a year and a half where I've had two Tundras. I don't need two trucks and I'm trying to decide. This truck is my favorite car ever to drive. It's great for off-road. It tows okay. Actually, it tows great. But now that we're starting a business kind of based around trailers and RVs, I find myself towing a lot. I think from the factory, this truck was rated to tow 6,500 pounds. This is almost 10,000. And the way that we have it set up now, it tows that no problem. From the factory, there are definitely some deficiencies with heavy towing in a Tundra. The biggest one is the tires. So I already had my airbags. I already had my rear sway bars. Factory said I could tow whatever. Uh, during our trip, we had an issue and I ended up towing kind of a double trailer right out about 10,000 pounds. It was about 9,800 pounds. And when we first started driving, the truck was all over. So I went straight to a tire store and I bought a set of E-rated or E-range uh, BFG tires, solved my problems. I love towing with this truck. I'm relatively careful when I tow. Um, you know, I, I, well, it's dangerous. Towing is inherently dangerous and you got your full family in there. And it's one of those things, this truck is meant for off-road. I have towed with this truck. We've towed uh, off-road camper trailers and it's done great. But when I'm towing a heavy load, this truck gets it done. So I need to decide which one to keep. I'm gonna show you some of my favorite parts about each truck and some of the drawbacks. And in the comments below, please tell me what you'd take. Now I know that this truck right here has a cult following, but I have driven both of these trucks now. This truck is 20,000 miles and I have about 25,000 on this truck right here. So I've driven them both. I know them both. They both do their own thing well. I need help decide because I don't need two Tundras. That's the bottom line. I'm running out of space at my house. Um, one of the other things people will come up with, that comes up with these trucks is gas mileage. I did another video a while ago breaking down this Tundra here and all the mods we've made to it. And I said I got about 10 miles to the gallon. Well, that was my experience with the fully loaded off-road, a lot of four-wheel drive. You know, it gets about 10 miles to the gallon when I have my full family in there, the dog, the cooler, the tools. And, you know, we might be towing a small, like little tent pop-up trailer, like a really small off-road trailer. We're getting about 10 miles to the gallon. Recently, I had to go to McCall, which is up in the mountains above Boise. I had to go there twice in a weekend. And so what I did is I drove both trucks. This truck, it was, I went to the same spot, same roads. This truck here, 
um, was nearly 16 miles to the gallon on the odometer. Fat, these are a little bit bigger tires than factory. 15.2 here. So the old Tundra with 200,000 miles on it does get better mileage in my experience. So let me show you some of the advantages, disadvantages of each one. Okay, so here's my 2021 Tundra. This truck's set up for towing, tows great. It has these boost tow mirrors. These tow mirrors are awesome. There are not tow mirrors available for the first gen. Supposedly you can put an 01 to 06 Dodge 2500 mirror on with some modifications. I've heard mixed reviews on that. These tow mirrors now have 20,000 miles on them and they are rock solid. So benefit number one to the, uh, to the second gen Tundra is tow mirrors. Benefit number two is the size of the cab. So we have, it's a family of five. You know, I'm one of those people, I hate bucket seats. If I have a truck, if I can carry six people, why wouldn't I be able to carry six people? As it is now, when you take the other truck, my family can ride in that, but if grandma's with us, she has to drive her own car. We have to take two cars. Much easier just to put everybody into one car. That's the next benefit is this truck has a bench seat. So super rare for these Tundras. Really hard to find, but let me show you the bench seat. So it's kind of a mess in here, but this truck has a bench seat, which I absolutely love. So there you are. There's the bench seat configuration. We can fit six people in here comfortably also with bench seats in my experience they have more storage than a giant console so if i have the big console i have a couple of cup holders which is nice but here i have storage i can put binoculars in here whatever so i have a ton of storage that i don't get to a lot right here we fold down the seat i have my cup holders and i do have quite a bit of storage in here so to me the bench seat is not a trade-off really really like this part about the truck you know i don't need an automatic shifter right here. It doesn't make any sense to me. Just put it on the column. It's not like I touch it that often. Kind of old school that way. The other thing this truck has is a factory backup camera. So with towing trailers, you know, the hardest part for me is always lining up the ball and the hitch. I can add that to the other truck, but again, it's work. The other thing is, is this has an infotainment center. We don't really use it. It hooks up to Bluetooth and stuff, but you know, you can add a stereo to a truck. The other benefit of the 2021 Tundra is this back seat is huge. So for a while we had a Chevy Suburban and we had my 06 Tundra. The kids felt the seat in the 06 Tundra was larger than in the Chevy Suburban. And I, I think they were right. There's more room in the back seat of the first gen Tundra than there is in a Suburban. However, this is downright spacious. So this seat, the front seat is all the way back. I'm six foot one, I'm like six three from the waist up. So I do have kind of short legs. I have size 15 shoes, so for me, or feet, I guess I have size 15 feet, um, but you look, so I'm size 15, I'm 6'1", there is a ton of room in the back seat of this truck. My kids prefer to ride back here. In fact, the three of them with the lab did, you know, 11, 12,000 miles on that road trip. They loved it back here. Really, really comfortable back seat. One thing I don't like about this generation of Tundra is the under seat storage back here is almost non-existent. Now, some people cut out the factory carpeting and they're able to get a little storage, but almost no under seat storage. Kind of a drawback in my mind, but we solve that with our truck drawers. Oh, look, got chargers everywhere. Uh, one of the other things about this Tundra versus the 06, the 06 has better cup holders. So while this, the 06 has a console, this has a bench, but the 06 has cup holders that pull out from the dash. Really nice. This truck, it's weird that Toyota made a truck, I mean, what? This truck's years newer, 15 years newer than the other one. The cup holders are much better than the 06. Kind of a small complaint, but it, it does add up, right? You have more cup holders and better cup holders. They fit more sizes of containers. Um, so that's one point the 06 wins is cup holders. But as far as cabin and interior, the 21, the second gen, really, really, a comfortable truck. Slight difference here and once again I can recreate this on the 06 if I decide to keep it but this truck the topper we chose has wind doors and if you've never had a topper with wind doors this is the only way to do it. So I can keep my chairs in here so we have three chairs for the kids, two chairs for my wife and myself. On the other side we can stash other stuff and I can just walk in here pull my chair out. The other Tundra the 06 first gen Tundra does not have that. But like I said, we could buy a new topper, figure that out. 
This topper also came integrated with a roof rack rail, and then we have this Prince Sue Designs or CBI off-road roof rack. Really, really a nice roof rack. We use it uh, mainly to hold our rocket box, and we can also load up our paddle boards, whatever, bike racks. Really like the design of this roof rack. Also something I could add to my 06, but it's more work. The drawback to this truck is the bed length. It has a little teeny tiny short bed, which, you know, when you're towing trailers is fine. And now that I'm kind of into the trailer life, I can always take a trailer and load whatever I want into it. So, you know, there's, there's ways around it, but I do like having for everyday use, I do like having a bed that's at least six and a half feet long. Eight foot bed's nice sometimes, but not all the time. Here's the bed of the uh, 2021, the second gen. You know, both the trucks have our truck drawers in them, but just wanted to show you pretty small. You know, it's, there's not a ton of room in here. You know, we did modify it so we can hold some gear up in the top of the rack here. And then you get to the drawer. So this is my, this is my always full drawer. And it has place stuff and tools and first aid kit, everything we'd ever need. Rarely, that stuff just stays with the truck all the time. This other drawer I leave open. And so my son and I are going on a bike ride or a bike race this weekend. So we have all of our bike tools. Our helmets will fit in here. Both of these trucks are SR5 packages, so they're kind of the lower level of the Tundra world. I'm a utility guy, just utility first all the time. So for me, there's no benefit in paying a lot more buying like a, in the 2021 Tundra. So that's a base model truck. It still comes with Bluetooth and a sweet stereo, power windows, air, everything I would ever need. You know, I don't see the value in spending an extra $20,000 just to get leather seats and fancier wheels. I can find that elsewhere um, now if toyota had offered the 21 tundra with a factory locker like the like the tacomas have and it cost an extra eight ten grand i probably would have spent it i love factory lockers i love good suspension but without true mechanical differences i'm not going to spend extra money just to get leather seats so both these trucks fall into my utility category as you can see i still have the factory wheels on here um you know, once again e-rated tires i'm just I like E-rated tires, man. If you're going to get a tire, you might as well get one with big, thick sidewalls that can tow well and uh, take some off-road abuse. Just seem to hold up better all the way around. Some other mods that I've made to this Tundra. Brute Force Fab bumper, the ARB style bumper. I have a come up winch with Factor 55 gear on it, synthetic line. I can put a winch on the other truck. That's not a big deal. I also have an ARB compressor, which I think is a huge upgrade for any truck. I do not have an air compressor on the 21. If I kept that truck, it would definitely be a modification I would make. I use this air compressor all the time. Um, in this truck, there's an air locker. So I have a locker in the rear axle. I used it just this weekend when we went on a little climb. Worked great. I love having a locker, especially a selectable locker. If you've ever driven like a Detroit locker in the snow, you know they, kind of, they suck. I mean, it's like having a spool and you're going sideways. So a selectable locker, real nice but the most important part to me is the air compressor and what i use the air compressor for is adjusting tire inflation rates my 21 tundra the second generation tundra with those e-rated tires when i tow i inflate them to about 65 psi but as soon as you go off road that truck rides like my old f350 it rides horribly so i have to let the air out and i can take the air out to about 25 pounds and still have a nice solid sidewall with those e-range tires but I have no way to fill it back up again. So for me, the number one reason to have an air compressor on your car, especially if you do what we do where you tow and then you're gonna go off road or even just exploring on a dirt road, you can adjust your tire pressures. Huge, huge thing. But once again, that's easy. I can put an air compressor in that truck, solve that problem. The 06 Tundra that has a slightly smaller cab and I have a console right here. There is a way to add a bench seat. If I kept this truck, that's absolutely what I would do. Um, for me, it's just, we're back to utility. If you have space for six people, why not carry six people? I don't need this. And as you'll see, there's not really that much storage room in this console. I would actually say that with the under seat storage in the bench seat of the second gen, I have more storage. All right, sorry I had to jump around a little bit. It's a 98, 100 degrees, depends on which truck. This truck says 98, I think that truck says 100 degrees out and the GoPro overheated. But here you are, here is me seats all the way back and recline to my driving position and so you can see how much less room there is uh, my kids are not wrong when they say they want to ride in that other truck i don't blame them at all 
my size 15s don't fit so the cab and the gen 2 for a family definitely superior definitely superior this truck's a little bit narrower but the big thing is the cab's longer than the other one it's a win for the gen 2. once again storage in these ones isn't great in fact, there's almost no storage under the seat. There's a little pocket here, but I am able to keep all my winch and recovery gear under here. So on the other side, I have my factory jack. And then over here, I'm able to keep my winch, recovery gear, you know, the basics. Not a big strap, but I'm able to keep a thimble, um, a receiver thimble, and some factor 55 gear. You know, so that, that can always ride in the front if I need it to. The other thing I did to my first gen was I took out the plastic that goes across the back here. This truck, I always want a truck without a topper, but then it's just so hard to keep all your tools and your gear and everything you need. But for a while I was running it with a rooftop tent and uh, no topper. And so I, I, what I did is I took that plastic out and I put in this sheet of webbing here. And then I was able to strap in first aid kit, some basic tools, whatever we needed right here and keep it in. So that was pretty nice. Um, somebody were gonna buy this truck, they might be like, well, where's the plastic? And it's like, well, I'd rather have all this storage here. Here's the back of this of the Gen 1. Nice thing about the Gen 1 is it has that six and a half foot bed. So again, I have a trailer. I don't always need a six and a half foot bed, but it's nice. You can get more gear in here. Um, you can sleep in here a lot easier. Topper does not have wind doors though. So everything that's stuffed in the front along here, I cannot get to unless I crawl my big old butt in there. I do miss my wind doors here. No roof rack, but you know, I could add that no problem. It's just time and money. We go to the back of the truck. You know, now this one's set up for camping, exploring, overlanding, whatever you want to call your hobby. I have my drawers in here. I have my high lift and a saw. And then over here on this side, we have traction mats, shovel, Pulaski, and an ax, I believe. So we have all of our recovery gear in here. Really nice. You know, one of the problems with these older Tundras, not just mine, I've seen it on some other ones, is the tailgate doesn't always open nice. So once every year, six months, I mean, I've got it figured out, but it's two-hand operation. You gotta push and open. Once every six months, I have to take this panel off right here, and I just grease up the mechanism. One of the other things, for a while, I didn't like driving this truck. When I put the suspension on, I tried to keep it as low as possible. In fact, I think I could adjust this suspension up another two or three inches on the front. Um, I tried to keep it as low as possible. I still had a lot of issues with the stability control, which Toyota only added, I believe, in this 06. When you get to the newer Tundra, I can actually turn it off. On this one, there's no way to turn it off unless you put it in four-wheel drive. Going around corners, there's a lot of beeps. Sometimes the brake, uh, the brakes engage. I have a video on it. I did a little fix. Um, and all you do is, when you're going up the mountain roads and it's starting to beep, turn the truck off, hit the button, some lights come on, but your VSC no longer comes on. Since I made that fix, I've really enjoyed driving this truck. It might be a little bit harder to sell this truck just the way that I've built it and not really focused on looks or fancy wheels. Might not, you know, there might not be as many buyers where on the second gen, it's essentially a brand new truck that has been updated to tow and it does that beautifully. In summary, if, I, if you told me I had to drive into the mountains, go camping, drive around town, take my kids to a bicycle practice, I'm gonna drive this truck nine times out of 10. If you told me the family had to go to Montana today in a 12 hour drive or I had to tow across town, I'm taking the Gen 2. So please help me out. Put some comments down below. Ask any questions. I have a lot of experience with these trucks. I love them both. I just can't decide. So let me know what you think. Also, please like and subscribe. It's been slow on the videos this summer. Who knew that being home working, trying to work with three kids at the house is hard, right? Uh, so the videos are a little slow, but we're going to have some more coming out soon.